Champions Cup, the final quarter final. All French Affair, Clermont and Toulouse. Should be a pretty good game, man, to be fair. Um, I know Leinster and Exeter was a massive one on the radar, both being kind of recent champions, defending champions against, you know, former champions. But you've got the first team in the top 14 up against the fourth team in the top 14. Both chock full of internationals. So, uh, yeah, hopefully this is going to be a good one. Uh, the other game on is Racing against Bordeaux, but I'm going to watch this one. It is on at 2 o'clock in the morning in New Zealand, so I will um, definitely be watching this one on demand Monday morning my time. But I will quickly go over the lineups, mention some of the stats from last week's games. And um, yeah, remember Toulouse beat, uh, beat Munster in their one, and Clermont had a kind of last minute win over Wasps. So tough games, they both... But they both had last week, but um, yeah, they should be should be ready to go. Uh, there's kind of minimal changes for Clermont. They have brought in Yato into the second row. Rabbi uh, Pelissier and Oravon are the front row, so it's pretty stable. Baha Mahina is alongside Yato in the second. Uh, Kankurie, Fisher, and Fritz Lee are the back row. Fritz, Fritz Lee, I didn't watch the game in full, but I watched the highlights of it. But his statistics, man... He made like 14 tackles in that game. He was just bloody everywhere uh, for Clermont. So he'll need to be doing the same. Uh, they've brought on Para to start at 9. I think Basie was a wee bit criticized for a bit of lack of control uh, last week. So they brought in the experienced man in Para. And um, Lopez is number 10 outside of him. So it's a really like old school experience 9-10 combo for Clermont up against the likes of Dupont and Intermac, like the current crop uh, for the French side. So that in itself should be a pretty interesting watch. Uh, Fofana and Moala are the same midfield as last week. Moala had like 73 mid run meters, so he was apparently uh, tearing it up even if he didn't get on the scoreboard. Raka, Pino and Matsushima are the back three. Matsushima got that last minute try. Uh, Pino had like four clean breaks. He was everywhere, so... Very, very uh, dangerous team, this Claremont side. But then you look at Toulouse and you would say pretty much exactly the same thing. Uh, by Marchand and Palmoina, that's an all-international front row, former all-black and two current French internationals. Marchand is captain as well. Uh, the two Arnold brothers, they won't find many second rows taller than Rory and Richie Arnold. Uh, the twins... Uh, yeah, big, big units, those two guys. And uh, Tolofua, Kro and Kaino are uh, the back three. Kro made something stupid in terms of like 18 tackles in his game last week as well over Munster. Dupont and Intermag, like I mentioned, that's the 19 combo. That's the current France 19 combo up against the two veterans. I mean, these guys, Dupont and Intermag, even though they're young, they're kind of veterans in their own, right? They've been playing for France for a couple of seasons now, so... It's hardly inexperienced against experience. It's just more youth against maturity. But either way, uh, nobody is lacking experience among both sides, 19 combos. Uh, Aki and Zach Holmes are the 12-13 combos. Zach Holmes was a wee bit quiet with ball in hand, but defensively he did make a heap of tackles uh, last week in that game for Toulouse as well. Uh, Lebel was uh, an eye-opener for me. Like when you look at the back three, of LaBelle, Colby, and Meda. I'm probably looking at Colby as my man to watch. But LaBelle, man, last week, he was... Just his step is absolutely, stupidly crazy. And you think of Colby as well for his steps. But, man, LaBelle, 81 run meters, four clean breaks. Yeah, he was very, very dangerous. I look forward to seeing more of him. The more I get to see Toulouse play. Um, but, yeah... Very, very good looking lineups. What can you say? Uh, these teams did play, but not relatively recently. Their, their most recent match, I believe, goes back to September 2020, when it was a 33 points to 30 win for Clermont at home. And looking back at the recent history between the sides, it does seem to be the home side that, for the most part, is the team that gets the job done. So maybe that gives advantage to Clermont on this one. Certainly does, but then again, without the fans, it is really hard to get a good read on that. Um, yeah, uh, they did meet in that game in 2020 September. Um, Lopez kicked like four penalties, and uh, Renard Alstart got two tries, but he's not playing, 
So it's kind of hard to draw much upon that one. Um, in terms of the predictions, Rugby Forecast algorithm has Clermont by six at home, whereas the bookies have flipped that on its head. They are saying to lose by three points. So, yeah, should be a pretty interesting game. We are definitely going to see a French finalist. We've still got La Rochelle, who've already made it to the semi-finals. You've got Leinster, and then you've got one of these two, Clermont and Toulouse, and one of Bordeaux and Racing 92. So, man, it should be pretty fascinating. Um, speaking pretty well, maybe I need to watch some more top 14, the way these teams are going in Europe. But anyway, uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. You think Toulouse away from home can uh, upset the recent records of the home teams getting the victory, or do you think usual service will continue and Claremont at home will be too good. Anyway, you guys have any thoughts, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See you later.